friends, I now invite you to enjoy this classic Dr. Groovy lesson. Hello all, Scott Grove here today to do a little something different and a little something the same, okay? Um, this will be, of course, along the uh, country lines of um, electric guitar. Um, this is mixing rhythm and lead and together doing more of a contemporary type of thing. So not so much classic country as it is doing chords and lead things at the same time. I've done lessons like this before um, with electric and with acoustic and uh, today I'm basically just shooting for a few different things, learning how to tie a lot of this stuff together as far as progressions go and just offer up a few more um, things that will get you from one chord to another easy and just throw in some more um, ideas expanding on some previous lessons. So if you can find the one that came before this uh, on the free lesson page again right below here if you are on um, YouTube there's a link to my website and you can get all the free lessons there. Use um, Firefox because uh, Internet Explorer and Chrome and all that stuff is not supported there so only Firefox will be supported and uh, you can try your other browsers but guarantee uh, that Explorer and Explorer based things such as AOL and all that will not work. Okay, so uh, you can just go there and it's, everything's by genre. You can do your acoustic stuff and then you can do your, your country uh, lead guitar stuff, your rock and blues, your bass guitars, your mandolins, your flutophones, your you know whatever, your conch shells. <laughs> ah, nose is itching. Um, anyway, today's uh, acts of choice. People ask me all the time uh, what my favorite guitar is. Is this it? No, but it's in my top couple. Okay, I was very fortunate to get this one through a great friend of mine. And um, this one here was uh, this Spalted Beauty. Uh, this one was built by Modulus, uh, Modulus Graphite, uh, for Mr. Steve Miller, yeah, the Steve Miller group, Steve Miller Band. Um, so this was one of his guitars that was made for him. He toured with it, played it often, and um, he got up to around 400 and some guitars and decided to just sell off a bunch. And um, the heavier guitars, due to his age, he's selling off. So I ended up with this one. And it being modulus also means that it is a, a, a non-traditional guitar, which I love. You know, me and uh, Wood generally just don't like each other because I know what the disadvantages of Wood are. Here's a little thing of Steve wrote on the back here. They'll keep on rocking me, baby. You know, sign that up and so forth. But here's what the back of the modulus graphite necks look like. The great thing about these is you never have to adjust them ever, ever, ever in their entire lives. No such thing as a truss rod on these because they cannot and will not ever warp. So that's a beautiful thing. No such thing as warping here. Okay. Um, as far as just a quick rundown on this, just for fun, three on and off switches for the three EMG pickups. A lot of people don't like them, think they're sterile. What it is is they're so dang clean sounding that they can't um, handle it. People like things to be raw sometimes. I like things to be just as clean and pristine as humanly possible and this axe does it a uh, huge big time. Okay, so it's a spalted maple top on whatever kind of wood that is, you tell me. I don't care. I know it doesn't matter, so um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, volume. This is an 18 volt system, two 9 volts. And right here's your treble, mids, and bass. So you've got an amplifier basically, or preamp anyway, right there. And I love it. Wouldn't change a thing about this thing, really. I might put on a roller nut, and that would be about it. But of course, it's got the graphite nut, so uh, there's not much reason to do anything other than I would like maybe some staggered tuners and the uh, roller nut. Um, therefore, you don't have the you know the high compensated tuners. Therefore, there's no need for a string tree. But other than that. Um, super cool guitar. Okay, so let's get down to the real part, um, and that's learning some stuff. Okay, a lot of this stuff I've taught before, 
um, a lot of that's hot on acoustic again like I said a lot on electric and why would I cover something I've already covered again number one because I feel like it which is the most important thing of course because um, um, why would I want to come in here and teach something that I didn't want to I've got my heart into this tonight and so I feel like doing it so I will teach it better <laughs> and you'll learn better because I'm gonna be throwing some cool stuff in again this is not traditional country this is uh, simply thinking in terms of lots of chords but with lead stuff thrown in over top of it but all done as a comprehensive thing whereas if you're the one and only guitar player or even the only um, melody maker in the entire band you know no keyboard player no any other kind of player other than a bass player then this comes in really handy if you got a beverage join me okay so what I'm talking about okay like um, I swing it around it might help to see the neck when I actually start playing here like say we're in the key of A um, just simple stuff such as now to D Not even that, and other stuff. things just uh, very simple um, that are very um, like credence type but still on the country end but that are just droning over top of like ease Okay, so 10 minutes into it, and um, you actually get to find out what we're going to kind of do. Um, like I said, if some of this sounds familiar, uh, it's because you've heard it before via me or via the radio. One of the two. Um, most of the stuff I'm going to do without a pick. And for once and for all, I'm going to say it. I don't care what you do with this hand. Okay, so whatever floats your boat, it's just more important that you get the notes and uh, the ideas behind everything. Okay, again, I always implore you, please don't copy everything I do. Um, copy as much as you want, but again, always make everything your own. Just take ideas from me and then, again, turn them inside out, upside down, make them fit what 
you play, not what I play. Okay, just take my ideas and um, just take the take my ideas, please. And just like I said, just make them yours. Uh, some of these licks are cool, so of course take those, the ones that suck, make them better, please. And then come back and give me a lesson for once. All the people who usually gripe about my lessons are the ones who never have posted a lesson online to help share or to help better anybody. So please quit yelling at me when I'm actually um, here to solely help you. Um, who do you think you are trying to give all these lessons? What? what? So, I'm a guy who actually gives a crap. <laughs> You're the piece of crap on the other end just yelling because it's not Metallica, okay? So, now that that has been established, uh, I established that at least 10 times a year, uh, 12 times a year, I mention it at least once a month. Okay, so let's get into some cool stuff. Um, I'm just going to dime the guitar out, which is at very low volumes again because it's late at night and my wife's asleep. So, um, we're going to start off here in the key of A. And again, if you've heard this stuff before or learned it before, so what? Some people haven't. Okay? So here we go. So I'm going to be, like I said, I'm not even going to pick up a pick this entire lesson. Um, I don't like them, so I don't use them. <laughs> okay, so A string. Uh, basic lick is with the A string ringing. If you wonder why my A strings ring forever, it's because my strings will ring longer than yours. Mine will ring until I want them to quit. Boss CS3 compressor sustainer. Your strings don't stop or your sustain doesn't stop until you stop it. No other compressor will do that. So again, remember that one. Boss CS3 compressor sustainer and um, there you go. That's the end of the arguments on which compressor wins. Okay. <laughs> if, if I sound like a, a little peanut that's uh, a little overconfident in certain things just because I am because I'm right on oh so many things but I'm sure I'm wrong on something I was wrong on something once I thought but I was only mistaken but <laughs> okay so let's get into the real fun and quit jerking around um, low low A string okay hopefully the only A string you have unless you're one of them seven string guys and got it tuned down and then we're just going to the fifth fret E and B string and we're going to do five, seven, five. Okay, just as a slide and go back so you're picking it once. I'm doing the claw method here. Again, just a very contemporary sounding thing. Do all three if you want at the same time. I don't care as long as you get the picture, not so much the legs. Okay heard it a million times. The next ones that come naturally with it are, okay I'm going to go uh, do kind of a tab method. So G string is going to be 4, I'm just naming the frets, G4 and B3. Okay, you can look at the fingering. It'll keep us, uh, it'll save us all time and I can do more licks. So 4 and 3. And we're going to slide it up a whole step again, back and then resolve on the second fret. So we're going to be picking the thumb, the other two strings, the G and the B. Okay, so four and three, up two, six and five, back two, four and three, then two and two. Okay, so we have So that's the uh, phrasing I'm going to use. And use whatever phrasing you want. What's that? Just going up on the B string. Okay, thumb first. Then pick up the high E string and carry it back with you on the return. Just mess around with it. So I'm showing you variations. Variations, variations are great. OK, 
Okay, so again, just a variation of the that I showed you. Okay, so think beyond what I'm showing you. Okay, so instead of we have and instead of we have. Okay, just whatever um, your little brain can think of, do it. Okay, so you have the formations and the chords that go under them. So go all out, just explore every possible place to play these. And please do all the bends too. I will show you that as soon as I get done uh, taking you down the entire scale that we have here. of course is just two and two up to four and four back to two and two okay now the uh, typical roll or I just like the typical uh, going with the middle finger the ring finger going up to the third fret and going to the four on the A string and then grabbing the two fingers and plucking the D and G strings. Okay, so we have. Okay, so use any parts of these. Don't always do double stops. Um, mean, well, of course, you can do two notes at a time or three strings pretty much all these are double stops but don't always think you have to go two strings together pick one or the other If I were to only be doing, you know, these two notes that I'm showing you, you wouldn't come up with all that cool stuff. Okay, so there it is all the way down. Okay, cool thing about this is when you're bending things, let's start at the low end. Let's go to the A string. Okay, I'm bending the A string at the second fret. thing about this particular bend is if you bend it and you have to bend it towards the floor as soon as it actually connects and meets and bumps and grinds with your D string it will be in harmony which is where you want to bend it it's a whole step higher so it just finally hit my D string and I know automatically it's going to be in tune with you know as far as the bend goes it will be a whole step higher then, of course, hit your D string. Of course, it will be on the second fret. And let her go or don't. You can let them stay there and hang out and do whatever you want. Again, don't just do what I do. Carry it out. Do something with it. Okay, so that's one that you can bend. The other one is right here on the uh, D string, the same note you're just playing. Way to find out what that one is to play the A string. Then hit that D string, second fret. Always makes for a nice ending to a tune. Again, bending it towards the floor a whole step. Same thing with the uh, G string.
and these are being bent towards the floor. People who aren't used to bending them towards the floor, if you bend them upward, they're going to crash into each other and stop the other notes from ringing. That's why we're bending them towards the floor. Plus, it's a much better um, movement for a lot of things. It just keeps things out of the way. They don't run. Like I said, they're not going to be bumping into these low, open notes that we're letting ring. Okay? So... <laughs> You can go up higher as I just did. So I went up two whole steps. So here's up a whole step, A from to B. And I can go up all the way up to C sharp. Here's up to B. Okay, so just depends on how tough you are and how thick your crazy strings are. Remember, string thickness does not matter on your tone, on electric guitars, blah, blah, blah. You're going to say BS, but no, it's not BS. Um, so, whatever gauge you're using, if you can't bend them well, go to a lighter gauge. It's not going to affect your tone. Again, you can call me out and call me wrong, but then again, you will be wrong. It's just the way it is. <laughs> um, I didn't go through all this stuff all my life to be wrong. Okay, the next one, all the way down. We're just bending from here on out, of course. <laughs> um, the next one, you get to do a half step. Just bend down one fret. Okay, so there I actually got to bend the D string down. Then when it hits the next string down, which is your G string, then you get to actually fret. You get to hit them, then hit the D string again. your low E string again, or low A string. So you got A, then the second fret on the D string, bend it up a whole step. When it gets there, you can now, you're actually fretting your G string also. Hit that note. Now hit your D string again. And as you release it, you can grab that low A again. And... So go all over the place, bend these puppies all over, okay? So, <clears throat> one more time and then I'm going to keep going because i got a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff to cover in 25, or 35 minutes, sorry. Okay. And again, people who haven't seen it before. These two here, being the four and the three, you can act like your fingers are glued together, bend them at the same time. Same as that thing, okay? Grab your A string second fret and pull it into your third. You can add the rest of the chord there. Add whatever you want. And of course you can when you get up to these two notes. You go up to the E. And of course the A. there's all that okay so the melodic part of this okay those are typical things like I've always shown is to do okay 
Okay, so there's the whole point of this, is to actually get something more contemporary sounded that is not just... You know, that's all fine and good, but then there's other kinds of music. Other styles of country, other styles of contemporary. just the find one that fits find the one that works out of all this stuff I showed you Boulevard. Um, all this stuff comes from something as simple as this. Um, again, only 12 notes in the world. Whatever order you want to put them in is up to you. I'm just here to show you the way my child. Okay, so there you are in um, A. Of course, there are plenty of other places to go in A, and we'll run into some along the way. Okay, let's go to D. Same thing. Nothing different. D string. Do the same things. You're just going tens to twelves, back to tens. Again, same stuff. Again, use these, which are going, doing, um, so you're at seven all the way across. So now you're going to nine on your D and eight on your B, skipping the G, but you're playing it. All three strings at the same time because I am. If you don't want to, don't. Okay? And then... Then... Or... 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 Doesn't matter. What's all that? All the notes I just played, I'm just doing hammer-ons. You know how to do hammer-ons and pull-offs? Those notes I showed you are all in that same thing. Okay, but I'm basically going along the thing of playing um, more chordal sounding things. Um, all this other stuff's been, discu or been discussed. Um, so let's grab the open D. So none of this, none of the rules have went away. They're exactly the same rules because we are basing them off of an A shape. Just like we were here, we're basing it off of A shape, so everything works. <laughs> okay, so no getting anywhere there. You can always do that. Okay, so you have the fifth below. Or, okay. Now you have the fifth below. I'm sorry, the third above. Ugh, my bad, I'm so sorry. Uh, here's your D, same as here. So you got one, two, three. You could use that to your advantage because you have it right here. There's the five. Five, four, three, two, one. But remember those. So one, Two, three, four, five. Just basic scale. And you've got a low E string, use it. You can do downward bends with it, okay?
your bends. I'm up to the E, e note now. Okay, so have fun with them. Okay, now we're going to E. If we're just doing E or A, D, and now E. So same junk. Um, e. You got a little E string. Okay, but let's do the uh, typical stuff coming backwards, which are all kinds of things here. Um, let's just do sliding from the uh, third to the fifth fret on the B. Okay, you can add in the low thing or not, or just pay attention. It makes no difference as long as you know the licks. Now to fifth, fifth fret, back down to third. I'm grabbing the B string and the E string together and the low string with my thumb, if you can't tell. Okay. Now down to three, two. Okay, I could go open to get the B or slide up on the uh, second fret up to the fourth fret on the G string. Now I'm hitting the low E the 4th fret of the G string, which is a B, and open B. Okay, so I have down to 2, down to 1, and then I'm going to do 2 to 4 on the D string, with the low E string ringing, and same thing on the A. Okay, so... That's just a bend instead of going like this. Okay, so I'm just using my brain and doing bends. Okay, so what was here? Going up two frets, bend up two frets. Release it. Now I can go from here to here, but start with it bent and release it. That's called a pre-bend. So we went, had it bent begin with, or bend it, release it, pre-bend it, half step. Now bend it up to the B. Now release it. Now pre-bend it up to the A. Now we can pre-bend this, because we're going to do that. And same with the next one. How do, how do we know we have it there? Because you bend it in advance to the next string till it touches. Always on the second string is where it works. Any other fret, it does not work. Okay, so on the second fret, if you bend that D string down and it touches the G string, as soon as it touches it, it is in tune, so you can go ahead and hand it. Hit it. So the boom, it just hit it. Same thing with the other one. And it hit it. I'm going to go back down here, make sure I can feel it. Yep, there it is, hitting the uh, G string. And now it's hitting the D string, A string, I'm sorry. It's hit, the A string is hitting the D string. And of course, so you have all that. So mess with that. Um, other things to do are trills. Um, whether you want to go that or just simply. People don't think of that lick. A string. D. Back to A string. Now fill it in. Then finally the low E. Try not to hit that minor open thing there. Okay. Okay. So 
again, people ask me before, what's one of your favorite guitars? This is one of my favorite, not my absolute favorite, but this is right up there because of the perfection of the neck. The neck is perfect. So if anybody wants a perfect guitar neck, Modulus Graphite offers perfect guitar necks. Again, just to warn you or to help you. Uh, no truss rods ever needed, don't matter whether it's in uh, 50 degree below weather or f uh, 150 degrees above weather and zero humidity or 100% humidity makes no difference. This neck will not move. So no truss rod adjustment ever needed, ever, ever. And that is much, 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 much better than wood. Okay, so to have a guitar done completely out of this carbon graphite is a beautiful thing. You'll find rain song guitars and such. Beautiful thing. Acoustics that will not ever screw up, will not be affected by any weather conditions, temperature things. Your strings will be, but your guitar will not. So, uh, the less wood you have in a guitar, the better. Okay, I know you're some of you cussing at me. Others of you know where I'm coming from. So, either digest that or don't. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm giving you the stuff for free, so either you believe it or you don't. If you don't, hush. If you do, go get you one. You'll never regret it. I'm not being mean, I'm just telling you um, plain and simple facts. Things have progressed a lot since the guitar was invented. And this is a huge thing. And it's been around for decades, but people are just set in their ways and it's sad. Okay, so there's A, D, and E. Okay, now with the E thing, of course you have all the same stuff. Okay, and don't forget, of course, the little Hendrix thing. Okay, which is simply, you have to know it by now. That thing I was showing you before. This one will be actually taking everything at the 7th fret, I'm sorry, ninth fret. And you're hammering on your A string from the 10th to the 11th. And I'm hitting three strings, the A string, D string, G string. Now go back two frets and do it back to the D. So it's a hammer on each time. And the wind cries merry, okay. But that's a cool thing to always stick in, especially at the end of a country tune. People freak out when you're getting done with Johnny Cash. It's just kind of a fun thing to put in. This music getting fun. Get out of the business, kids. Okay, so again, in E, you have so many things going for you there. Okay, let's do some more stuff in E since we're here. Um, fun groovy stuff okay simple licks those are all single notes okay and these notes are this very quickly I am not spending time on it that's why you have rewind so you can spend time on it low E string of course we already know that two four on your A and then finally two on your D so you have your low E now you get two four six on your D. Sounds great when you're playing it, letting your low E string ring. Now we're going four on the D, I'm sorry, four on your G to six. And you can hammer on or pull off back either way. And then finally back to E on your high, on your B string. Now you just create the same thing again. So you're going from 5 to 7 to 9 on your B, then 7 to 9, back to 7 on your E string. Slide all the way up to 12. Okay, so again, 
one time and we're moving on because I want more in here. <laughs> Run. Okay, you all know this already. Go. Okay, because all the notes are there. Again, think for yourself. I'm showing you the notes. You put them in different orders and put in some um, flavor flav. Again, I showed you these notes. Okay, low E. Then you're just hitting 2nd fret. I showed you both of them. Or, however I showed them to you. But now, no, you can. Same notes, just grab them with a different finger. Because you're always used to going. So do it. this, same thing as this, it's just down here, a lot of things you got to figure out for yourself, but I already showed you, it's just an octave lower, so you're not figuring anything out, but just go down there and, hey, I'm an octave lower, or hey, I'm an octave higher, hey, what do you know, I'm an octave higher, I'm an octave higher, um, so you see how the brain progression goes here. Okay, so there's three keys. Um, and again, you can do all these with open strings. A. And again, it doesn't have to be all this bendy bang, bock, 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 bock stuff. All this stuff is still part of it. It is um, as mellow as you want it to be. It is as groovy as you want it to be. But these are the same notes. It's just play them faster, play them shorter, play them staccato, let them ring. It's your music. Go make it. I'm just showing you what notes go together. Nothing more than what notes go together, what notes can ring together. The rest of it's up to you. Okay? With this particular lesson. Um, it's just the way this lesson goes. This lesson has 15 more minutes left in it, so let's cover some other cool stuff. Um, the other stuff with um, coming down off of chords. I've shown this one, and this is a beautiful thing, uh, with these three chords from E coming back down to A. I've showed this like 20 times, but you have to know it, and you probably do know it. Um, when you're doing a one five one four five pattern, which is A, if we're in the key of A, then you go to key of D. That's your four. Then your five. Back to four. Back to one. What's that? Nashville number system. Look it up or buy my video. One of the two. It's just that easy. Or like I said, Google it. You'll find it. One four is five. So get to five. Back to the one, which means go from you are in A, uh, the key of A, and you are in E now playing in the five. And you want to get from E back to A and make it sound cool, nice and easy. You got to go major, major, minor, minor, then back home. So you go one major, or I'm sorry, five major. So you're in A. So you got to go to the five, which is E. So this here's going to be what you do. You can either go one is home plate, four is your D, and five is that um, E. So we're going to go 5, 4, both major, then we're going to do 3, 2, these are part of the scales, um, just do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do, just your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, your root, your tonic, your second, which is minor second, 
your third, which is a minor third, your fourth, which is major, your fifth, which is major. So you do a major fifth, major fourth, major four, and then your minor three would be a C sharp minor, minor two would be a B minor, and back to one. This means simply going from five, four, three, two, one. Make a lot more sense? Okay, bass players. Okay, so if you had to think about it that way, fine. But nice triads to play over it, meaning three notes together, which is why I play without picks. Um, play them like I've been showing you everything, like an A chord. Play your E across the ninth fret. Major. That's your five. Your four is just two down to your D. Now, if you know what an A minor looks like, okay, that's going to be what you get out of the next one. So the next one's going to be your three minor, which looks like this. So you've got fret numbers. Six, six, five. Okay, six, six, five. Now that whole thing down a whole step means two frets to your two minor back to your one major. Five back to one. Five, four, then major three, major two. Ground control to major tom. <laughs> okay, major, major, to minor, to minor. What I do? I just did what I did, told you before. But I did it while I was playing an A chord. Pretty cool, huh? You can still bend notes while you're playing chords. Okay. <laughs> but it's great stuff, but use that. And use the full chords, too. Use the... My notes never die. I'm not lying to you. <laughs> I'll shut it up. Okay, nothing sustains more than my guitars because of the Boss CS3. Nothing else, no other guitar, because of its properties, will sustain as long as a Boss CS3 compressor. That's its job, and it does it so well, as you can tell. Okay, so if you don't go get one, um, dude, sucks to be you. <laughs> I'm really not trying to make fun of you, but I've been saying this stuff for so many years online here that hopefully some of it has sunk in to some of you. Um, okay, so the rest of it I'm going to basically leave up to you. Um, again, I'm going to throw um, ten more minutes of lessons at you and show you how to pick this stuff up, meaning tempo-wise. Um, and you get to learn all the other stuff yourself because it's all the same. Don't matter what key you stick it in. I just did the, excuse me, easy way out and did it with open strings. And then things to play along with. Okay? You're, you get to do the stuff with the B's in here. Uh, what do I do now? Think it through, kids. It's exactly the same. So... if it's electronic I have it okay <laughs> so um, do not put down technology um, new things are a beautiful thing especially if they are guitars that never ever ever warp 
uh, notes that never, ever, ever die. Uh, certain things are a beautiful thing and you should embrace them instead of putting them down because they're not cool in the chat room to have something that isn't made in the 50s, okay? So, um, let's get into a little bit faster stuff, but using the same thing again. Um, <laughs> These are more of the same thing, and um, let's do it with things that are more along the same line as the uh, lesson is. And these are prettier sounding things, and not so out there, which get into the rock. I still want to keep this contemporary for this lesson, okay? This stuff here are just, again, open A, going back to this, and you stick it in every key. You know, you just stick it. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. These are cool. Okay, so A. Now, 7th fret on the D string is an A again. Now we're just picking up our 3rd. 1, 2, 3. Which is 6th fret on the G string. So we're going to use middle finger on our 7th fret D string. And of course, just right there, first finger, sixth fret G string. All three, all three strings. Your low, your A in there with it. Now you're going to move up to. This is going to be calling out the sixth, um, or I'm sorry, the D string and then the G string. So you're at um, seven and five, then up to nine and seven, then up to eleven and nine. And then you got the 12 and 11, and then 14 and 14. Okay, again, open A through the whole thing. It's okay, again, uh, 7 and 6, um, 9 and 7, 11 and 9, 12 and 11, now 12 and 12. Just sound them out. They're easy enough. Okay, these are. Do you need to play it that way? I hope not. Bend that G string towards the floor. Check it out. That's the G towards the floor. Half step. Here we're fine. Now here, bend the string towards the floor, whole step. There, and then when you get to here, you can bend anything you want. You're back here again. with that any way you want. Okay, you have the notes, just play with them. Okay, when you get to the D, things are a little different looking. Okay, they're more like that. So open D, and you are at 7 and 7 on your G string, B string. Now, 9 and 8 on your G and B. Now, 11 and 10, now 12 and 12, okay, you can go all the way up to that, so, okay, so again, 7 and 7, um, 9 and 8, 11 and 10, um, go 12 and 12, Let's go ahead and go to 14 and 14, and then finally 16 and 15. Then you can continue down back to the A. Okay, and then try to work yourself into the E. Same thing you did in A, but do it in E. The E, 
and same thing, 7 and 6 on the A and D strings, 9 and 7, 11 and 9, 12 and 11, and then 14 and 14. While you're there, okay. Again, we're just four. Okay, so it's all the stuff that I've showed you in every key. Um, but again, to play it however you want. Have I showed you that? Yeah, I showed you without giving you the whole thing away. Again, that was just a... I'm just not finishing up the actual whole scale. Quit making it sound like scales and start making it sound like music. That's your job. Okay, so again, this is a very open-ended lesson and to try to think, make things sound more contemporary to you. I'm just going to do this because I am done actually with this one. Um, again, it's very loose. It's very open because I want you to think for yourself. I don't want to spell out every little thing. Um, again, a lot of this stuff's been covered, but I want you to realize that this is the stuff that makes that. Um Nothing there was not shown to you. Everything there was shown to you. So again, Scott Grove with the groovy um, Steve Miller's old axe. One of 400 of his axes. Um, I just happened to like this one a lot when a buddy of mine said it was up for sale. And led me right to it. And um, can't thank him enough for uh, having him get this to me again. Active EMGs. Volume treble, mid, bass, just like your amp. On and off switch, you can have all three pickups, you can have two pickups, one pickup, tele pickups, you have a neck that will never ever warp on you. It's a, it's pretty much a perfect guitar. Okay? Uh, hum free pickups, they, what can you not like about this? There's nothing you can't like about it unless you are an idiot. And that will not, or that will be the case with some of you because, you know, that's just Musicians are generally some of the stupidest people in the world, and that's not saying anything different than it is for any given uh, profession. Uh, don't matter if you're a car salesman or if you're a Unabomber or whatever, you know, people in your profession are generally, the other guys who are not you are some of the stupidest people in the universe. <laughs> okay, so um, your opinion is always going to be better than everybody else's, so my opinion in this case is so much better than yours. Why? Because it's my opinion. Okay, but really, uh, look beyond the wood and um, find things that are really cool. And again, look beyond the licks and find the music in there that is cool. Um, you can do more than you can possibly imagine with what I just showed you if you just go do the work, but I'm not going to do it all for you. Okay, again, that was a free lesson. Again, point right down here. Use Firefox, go to my website, get all the free lessons you want on all kinds of instruments, and just have a blast. Some of them show you everything inside out, and some are like this. Some I'm really nice, some I'm really mean. Um, depends on if I'm having my uh, uh, problems with my mangina that day. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, herpy trails. Bye-bye.